Hey everyone, this is Ben back with you in the Midwest Model Shop. Thank you once again to everyone who's gone to the MidwestModelShop.com and purchased t-shirts. We have several of these and a couple other designs available there for you to check out. I also recently added a little section just touching on paint to kind of uh, list the, the colors that I've used for several of the past build, builds to consolidate all that information for everyone. So in today's build episode, uh, we're going to do something different. I'm going to introduce you to my client's build. And the reason for that is I'm kind of at an impasse waiting here for parts to come in from the UK uh, to continue on our build. And I, I could piece together stuff and work on little things here and there, but it just it would be better if we just waited until we got everything we needed. So in the meantime, I'm going to work on my client's build. Um, I'm going to introduce you to the ship, uh, the parts that we've used, and you'll see where it's at. Then we're going to press on with the aft well deck, the forward well deck, uh, the photo etch details on the C bulkhead, getting that to work. Um, basically a lot of completely different stuff from what you've seen on our build so far. That's part of the reason I never videotaped it. Uh, even though it's the same ship, because of the options my client chose, the construction process is completely different. I mean, they, they, they may as well be completely two different model kits that are dramatically different. And because of that, um, I didn't film building his uh, because it took a lot of mental energy to say, today I'm doing this, this and, and, and figure out how these parts all are supposed to work and put them together and, and make a nice model and then go back to our build where we're lighting it and we're doing different things and we have all this interior stuff going on it was and it's just a dramatic departure and it, they just didn't track well and it was hard to mush them together so basically i'd work on one and then i'd work on the other since we're at a good stopping point though on our ship and my client's build has caught up and has passed all of the stuff that's really complicated and we're basically just putting things together now uh, more or less following the instructions, it, it makes a good point where we can go ahead and, uh, and film it. So I talked to my client and he was okay with showing it, so we're going to do that. Uh, so you'll get to see where we're at, you'll get to see uh, different parts that you can use and different options and, and just kind of how they all go together and it'll give you a look into what's coming up on our build because it's it's a little bit further along. Uh, so anyway, um, that's that's mostly it. The other, the other reason was uh, I didn't want to get a slew of people asking me to go ahead and build them a ship, although that didn't totally work out. I've been asked by a bunch of people anyway. Um, I'm only interested in doing one commission build at a time. I believe that if you've uh, solicited my services, you get, I'm going to work on yours until it's done. And when it's done, then I can work on the next person's. Uh, so, and it's not done yet. So that's where we're at. So anyway, um, I hope you enjoy this build and uh, give me some feedback here. If you like seeing this, we're gonna I'm gonna keep pressing on with filming it, and we'll we'll move right right along here. I think at this point, uh, and we'll make a lot of progress here. Um, yeah, and that's that's kind of all I have to say about that. So anyway, leave a comment down below with what you think. Sorry about the long intro. Let's get into the build. Okay, so here we are with my client's build. Uh, we're zoomed all the way back. We'll see if we could get in a little bit closer here so you could check some stuff out. So let's start off with the highlights here. Uh, the red that you're seeing is Tamiya Primer Oxide Red. This was at the client's request. You can order it from them if you like this color, uh, or you can go to an auto parts store and pick up a can of their red uh, car paint primer. It's going to be the same color on top. Uh, we're using uh, flat black, Model Master flat black up above. Uh, the yellow stripe is Model Master's Insignia yellow. And then for white, we are using Tamiya flat white up on top. So those are the main colors right there. Um, let's move in a little bit closer now. Okay, so uh, for the detail set, uh, the customer is using the KA, our, yeah, KA Mark I detail set, lots of resin pieces. And then due to an unforeseen situation with the uh, missing detail with rivets on his hull, we opted to track down one of Alexander's uh, photo etch uh, side kits, hull kits. So all of this detail that you're seeing right here is the photo etch um, 
stuff that Alexander used to make. And I'll move the camera in a little bit closer here as we pivot along. In fact, let's do that. So this proved to be pretty challenging to go ahead and install. Um, Alexander's instructions were good to get you going in the right direction, but they left out some pretty critical details, I think. Um, if I was to do it again, what I would do is all of the plates, I don't know if you can make out like the big plates that you would stick on everything, I would install those after this was installed on the ship, after your big sheets are installed on the ship. Also, um, those of you who have his kit know that when you put this together, uh, behind areas right in here and behind like these windows in particular, there's a big reinforcing piece of uh, photo etch that you attach to this outside piece that you see. His instructions say remove all the raised surface detail and then go ahead and slap the side on. If you do that, ask me how I know, your plate won't sit flush because that reinforcement plate behind these windows right here bumps and pushes the whole thing out. You actually need to remove more plastic behind where that reinforcement plate goes so that the whole thing ends up sitting where you want. So that's my pro tip there. Then, once you're done and the whole thing is installed, uh, I would go ahead and you know follow his instructions and put on the little plates and details and things like that uh, that come with the kit. So then we also utilized the, um, instead of the kit pieces, we utilized the 3D printed uh, reinforcements for these this upper deck here so that uh, it was easy to go ahead and uh, just throw some acetate in the back here for the windows so that you could go ahead and see inside. Um, if I didn't mention it before, my client has specifically requested that this kit not be lighted, which was no big deal, uh, but we still have to go ahead and build it, you know, as nice as we can um, and simulate the windows even though they're not being illuminated. And so what we're using is the transparencies for uh, if you were doing like a, a overhead projector, you could get these at the store and they make great glass. You see my reflection right there? So if you get up close, you can see inside no problem and it reflects nicely and it is to scale. So that was a really cool feature. Uh, let's go ahead and move around, take a look at some other things. Okay, here we are up on the forecastle on the bow. Uh, some of you saw my Instagram picture. This hull was warped. Not as badly as some that I've seen, but enough that dropping the forecastle in was difficult. Uh, I was able to get it to drop in on the bow, and then uh, to keep it down in place here, I was able to push it down. I actually had to make a special clamp that held over a jig it was a piece of wood that held over the top here and then I was able to clamp down and hold this whole thing down and in position and that forced the forecastle into the correct position to match our deck piece that's up here. Uh, again this is all KA details uh, up here on the front and then um, same thing with the hatch covers sorry I bumped the camera right there and you guys have seen some of the compare and contrast I've done in the previous video uh, showing these sections off and we're using the scale decks um, wooden decks on here and they look they look really really nice uh, let's move over here this is looking at our bridge forward bridge section here uh, I was holding off because using Alexander's kits I am also using for these upper sides uh, the 3d print or I'm sorry the photo etch parts from Woody's model works and we're going to be using his uh, forward bulkhead that goes here and when you install it you end up with a little gap at either side here uh, both Woody and pretty much everyone else who's made those made them assuming you were using the kit sides right here so you end up with a gap I already had this in the back of the ship wasn't a problem uh, on my Facebook page I showed it I just used a little filler strip in there to fill it in let me show you what I'm talking about Okay, so here's Neil's piece. I just dropped it in here. I got to do a little work to it to get the shape and everything to work right. But as you can see right here on the right, you have this little bit of a gap. Uh, this exists on all of them with everybody's aftermarket parts. The only possible exception, exception would be the China 3D printed 
bridge piece, which I now am in possession of. And so I'm going to try and pull that out at some point here when we address all this and demo how that all works and see if its fit is any better. But I wanted to go ahead and make sure we got these decks in place. Now I can come in here and monkey around with this thing uh, and I'm not in danger of damaging anything. And we could finish up these details up here in the front. What I also have to do uh, right here, these uh, staircases need to get installed. So that's on my to-do list here. Okay, uh, another detail here, moving back towards the private promenade area, and you can see these windows, they look really nice. Um, <clears throat> for those of you not lighting your kit, and if you do use this stuff, I did go ahead and install the promenade walls and detail everything up. Because, even though you can't see anything right now, if I take my light from my camera and I shine it in there, you can totally see inside. All that stuff you're seeing in there is little details, put some chairs in, little places set, things like that. Same is true with the Parisian Cafe. So for those of you not lighting your kit, um, consider putting those details in in case somebody goes ahead and shines a light on it. Okay, moving back here to the rear well deck, you can see we've got some of the ship's equipment inside, installed. This was uh, KA details, they turned out really nice. Um, I still have to go ahead and finish putting a flat coat and dulling down my uh, canvas looking cover on our rear hatches. Also you can see um, I've got a filler plate here. So in order, I cut off the kit parts and when you're done you have this huge hole. And all these, although these fit really well from KA, it's just going to glue better in a position uh, if you have that little plate installed. So I went ahead and did that. Um, let's take a look here. You can see some of the detail there on the bul bulwarks right there. They look pretty nice. I think they turned out well. Um, go ahead and looking at the back of the ship here. So these brown trim details are on the ship. Um, I could have used stretch sprue, but I had these 0.5 millimeter uh, thin pieces of styrene. They worked out best for what I had to replicate that look. Um, this is a difficult thing to achieve. I'd like them to be smaller. Um, Neil from Woody's Model Works talked about offering that as a photo etch detail because he could cut the, have the photo etch made to the right thickness out of a thick piece of brass. So you could paint it and put that on. Um, just a nice touch would be, that'd be interesting. I'd like to see that done. Uh, let's see, down here you can see that ladder is the wrong color. This ladder right here is also the wrong color. I I went with what was on the kit because that's what made sense to me. However, I'm seeing online and all my reference photos that I'm trying to dig up. Well, actually, every everyone who's done this, they paint the ladders black. And on the game, uh, the Titanic um, Honor and Glory, they're painted black. And I'm trying to find some black and white photos or some sort of reference material that says they're black. But I think I got to go back and change all of that. Uh, to get that all taken care of. So otherwise, uh, this whole area is looking really sharp. Um, there's some details here. Let's see, this is on the KA kit. All those little little parts right there get installed, um, which is nice because it backs up nicely to Alexander's piece, and you put it in and you're, you're good to go. Uh, let me show you something else I want to talk about. Okay, while we're down here, see all these little stands that you got back here? There, that one's a, a post back in the back here. Uh, these come, so this is part of the 3D printed support structure. Uh, mine came with one crooked. I've heard a lot of them show up busted. Um, I definitely had problems, like the one on the starboard side was like curved up in the air like really bad. I don't, I don't know what happened to it. So what I ended up doing was... Um, installing this deck up above and then I cut away every single one of the original 3D printed parts and I replaced them with styrene strip to be more to scale and so that this ledge follows the profile of the ship the way that it's supposed to. So that was a modification that I had to make as well. Uh, let's take a look at the stern. Okay, here we are at the stern of the ship, uh, looking forward towards the bow. As you can see, it looks pretty cool. Uh, we'll send on, 
move on down here. So um, my client also was able to go ahead and acquire a set. He did this at the beginning of Alexander's stern plates. And as you can see, they look uh, really awesome when you're done. Now, I've got some touching up to do on the Titanic Liverpool uh, paint job here, but that is done the correct way. It's uh, all recessed. You can see my paint line looks a little, uh, well, we'll just say uneven for right now. See how it curves and it curves and it curves? There's a reason for that. Our perspective is down looking up at a curved surface and and it's it's not a straight line. Uh, we're also not done. I need to do some touching up, but I wanted to come down here There you go. I think that's a pretty good shot uh, so that you could see all the stern plates installed. Um, here's what I have to say about this. The first thing you need to know is this piece right here, that is the very first one that goes on. And as you can see, it's not touching anything. It doesn't reference anything. You have to use Alexander's pattern and you have to get it absolutely perfect and absolutely the right spot before you put on any other piece or you're going to have all kinds of serious, serious problems. The other thing is, every single one of these pieces fits exact. They don't need to be resized. If you're off by half a millimeter very early on here, as you move forward, you will have all kinds of problems. So you want to make sure that you get it on right the first time. Uh, this whole bottom area here I did in one sitting. It took seven hours and it turned out absolutely perfect. And I came back the next day and put the upper plates that you see right here uh, on the side as it went around. And it was a detail that looks fantastic. Totally worth the time. Totally worth the money. Uh, except that you do have to come down here to see it uh, on the floor. When you're back up here on the side looking at things, you can see the line looks a lot better. Um, still needs a little touching up here and there, but a lot of the plating detail disappears on you. Um, it does end up working out pretty well with his uh, plate kit, side plate kit on the hall there. It, everything ends up basically merging together here fairly well. Right here is the seam where they, where they intersect, and uh, it goes forward from there, and it works out all right. So, yeah, that's basically where we are at on this build so far. Um, the other thing I want to show you, let's see if we can eyeball down the ship here. You can see the flow and curve of the hull moving along here. This is the ship's lines, and and it works out. It works out really well. Uh, I, I didn't think it was going to, well, I was nervous about it, but basically when I got this whole thing assembled to this point, um, I, I was very pleased to see that the ship has good lines. I know it's a little fuzzy here. I'm trying to focus it so you can see what I'm saying. We'll move back here. There you go. You can see what I'm saying now. So, again, I'm building this whole thing from, you know, the keel on up. Oh, real quick comment about the keel. I used the 3D printed keels from Shapeways on my kit, and I realized, I'm like, you could just build, use an L-shaped piece of styrene. It's the exact same size. Round off the corners and slap it on, and you're good to go. And so that's what I do with my clients to give him a realistic keel without wasting money from Shapeways, because these are like 50 cents or whatever they are. No big deal. So anyway, we're building from the keels, side keels up. Uh, for the most part, also same idea as before. I don't want to have my hands banging into things as I reach over the top of the hull to get to something. So a lot of the smaller details that were down low are going to be done first, and then we're going to come on up. So I think that gives you a good idea of where we're at. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's where the ship's at right now. And what I was planning on doing was going ahead and installing all the stuff on a deck. I've got all of these parts right here whipped out. Uh, we got to go ahead and basically what we have to do is figure out, and there's a couple pieces to go here. Uh, what am I going to be able to see through the windows? And if 
I can. Um, what interior stuff do I need to put in there? Again, this is not going to be an illuminated kit, but it is going to, you are going to be able to see inside. So uh, I'm going to have to figure that out. However, I'm thinking that it might be a really good idea to finish up in the aft well deck here, uh, get all these little details in place so I don't have to monkey with sticking my hands down in there. Basically get to the point where we just have the crane left um, and then we can go ahead and move on up the deck. And I'm going to save the foc'sle and the poop deck until basically the end because then all I have to do is work around those ends of the ship. And yeah, and we'll be good to go. So, okay, uh, let's press on. Okay, so I've decided that um, I should tidy up all these things in the aft well deck. Uh, you can see we got some wet paint. I forgot to paint the tops of the um, stands for the uh, cranes gray. So I've got a coat of paint on there. Uh, I also went ahead and if you look carefully, you'll see that I um, painted the ladders here and here black, same as on the other side. Uh, we finished up straightening out the hatch covers. So we'll go ahead and get those put into position so they don't slide around on me anymore. Uh, then, so I'm going to need to get some more paint on uh, the tops here. Uh, but we've got a bunch of fittings that need to be installed. On Down here we've got some, um, you know, all the little parts. And those are, I've actually got a bunch of those pre-painted and ready to go. So it's just going to be a matter of uh, pulling them out and getting them installed. There we go. So we can continue to move on up. Okay, we're going to get a little dot of CA glue in here ready to go. Uh, every time I go to install these things, I think they're called bullards. I always say, uh, I always have the name of these parts wrong. Um, so these are the K pieces, and I'm using the scale, the Titanic's deck. Now, allegedly, I don't know what's going on right now with that. I guess uh, these pieces don't line up how they need to for the scale deck's deck, and I guess that they're in the process of creating... Uh, scale, scale decks is in the process of creating a deck kit specifically for the KA detail parts, um, and that's that's great. Uh, I I don't see why you can't make this work though. Maybe I just I haven't gotten there yet. Anyway, uh, these fittings are going on and it's helping out. And then I got to figure out. I think I got this ready. The uh, winch right here. I think that's ready to go. Okay. Uh, it took a minute, but I got our winch all glue or, uh, painted up and assembled. Um, it's slightly smaller than the one that goes on the bow on the foc'sle, so it's a different size steam winch, but uh, the details really awesome. So we'll go ahead and drop that in here. It needs to go all the way up against that hatch, basically, like that. Nice. Uh, then we've got this vent, which hopefully won't give us any trouble. Um, this has a nice detail, a little, uh, like, I don't know if you'll, you'll see it in the camera here. Um, that little gold plaque. I don't know if that's right or not, but I, I put that on there because I thought that was a nice little touch. Because I, I think this is actually, I'm going to have the name wrong, but I think it's actually a fan. And uh, for sucking stuff up out of the ship, there we go. Okay, and then uh, there's two little vents down here. We're going to drop those on. Um, let me see if I can show this. So here, here they are. Notice it leans. 
and they both lean and I don't really know why uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to lean them both aft on the ship here so that they match up might have to do a little touch up on that no big deal um so these are painted black but and i don't remember how i arrived at this they're not actually black the color that i'm using is called nato black by tamia um i think that the color black called out in the uh sheet the the uh color guide that was in my book said it wasn't like actually black it had like a slightly different color to it there we go and uh, also there's the whole little rule uh, plasmo has he's like you know don't ever paint anything black because nothing's actually black it's a reflection of colors so that's what we did here with our bullards and stuff let's move in a little closer take a look okay so here's our aft well deck right now i think that looks pretty good assuming that uh I put enough glue on this vent right here, it shouldn't tip over. And that concludes, I believe, the bulk of the detail that we've got back here. Let's take a look at the other direction. Okay, here we are, back of the uh, ship. This is the detail we just threw on. I'm going to try and zoom in here and not mess this up uh, so you can get a look at all the detail on that winch. I think that it looks pretty awesome. Um, lots of detail there, and then when you, when you back up, it all just kind of disappears. So anyway, uh, yeah, that takes care of the back end here, and I think what we're going to do now is uh, worry about moving up to the forward poop deck, and uh, the, uh, the, I'm sorry, the forward well deck, and we'll kind of do the same thing and get it to the same point so we can continue moving up on the uh, ship. All right, pressing on. Okay, here we are back up at the bow. Uh, so I have the Sea Deck bulkhead uh, that I can install, and I mentioned before I was using the Woody's Model Works uh, Photo Etch bulkhead. Uh, it has very nice details. I've already gone ahead and obviously back painted black, and then uh, I don't know if you can make it out in here, but I put the little glass pieces in. So now all we need to do uh, is put in place. Now, because of reasons i guess i don't know this this hall was warped a little bit um and i think it affected this deck a little bit and then this deck right here is being held up by the 3d printed uh, bulkheads anyway what ended up happening is when i was putting this piece down uh, i ended up with this a little space underneath to get it to the right height i mean it worked but i wanted I wanted the corners, this corner, to be level with this corner of the ship and vice versa. And then I also I wanted this edge uh, to be flush with this deck. And so I ended up, it ends up fitting perfectly, but I had a gap. So what I did is I put down a 0 0.8 millimeter thick strip. I painted it orange, well, the mast red. And the idea is that if this goes in flush and sits on that strip, uh, it, the corners end up level and this deck ends up perfectly flush. And then the detail on the back ends up uh, exactly where we want it to be. Uh, the compromise and trade-off is we have, we're going to have this little lip down there, which honestly, I just don't think anyone's really going to notice when we're done. I can hit it with a little bit more ta uh, paint when we're done. That might help fill the gap a little bit, but I think that that is a uh, good compromise. So we're gonna go ahead and get our trusty CA glue and put some dabs on. We're gonna try and stay away from the glass uh, on the off chance that something I did 
causes the windows to fog up because it would be a bummer to have to reinstall this whole thing. So I uh, pushed it down flat on the little deck piece that I installed and now I'm just pushing it up flush. Uh, yeah, it sits on there nicely. Okay. I think that's good. That's that was real important that we got this initial step done. Let me swing the camera around here. Okay, I'm holding the camera freehand, so forgive me if we wiggle a little bit. But when we come around here, as you can see, we have a nice, perfectly straight line. And that detail really pops out nicely. It's centered up uh, the way that we want it to be. As you can see right there. So... I'm going to let that set up for a minute, and then we could talk about the other elephant in the room, that gap. Uh, we'd already talked about this before. Let's, let's go to the back of the ship for a second. Okay, so back here in the aft well deck, uh, long story short, we had the same thing. And here we're using the kit pieces. So if you look right there, I'll zoom in. I think you could see the, the work I did to fill it in. I put in, can you make that out? that little filler strip there on the right next to the photo etch here. This wall, this photo etched exterior is not the thickness of the kit part and so you have that gap and you got to fill it in. This was really easy back here to handle because um, it's just it's kind of hidden under everything. You just fill it in and you're all set. Up at the bow we got a different story. So up here you can see that gap uh, is a little bit more substantial and yeah we gotta do something about that what i was thinking about was actually cutting out a piece of photo etch because it's the same thickness and dropping it down in here uh, you're probably gonna have a little bit of a seam but this corner will match up nicely you'll have a nice 90 degree corner the size of the photo etch uh, i can use styrene as long as it's thin enough but, you know, we have photo etch intersecting photo etch. Uh, I might try and do that. So let me get some stuff cut out here, and then we'll, we'll, we'll figure this out. Okay, so I did it. A uh, thin piece of photo etch cut and formed, and then I used some CA glue filler uh, to drop it into position. Same thing over here on the other side. Oh, it's a little bit more difficult for you to see. So the trick now is just going to be uh, getting some metal primer on there and getting some paint on here so that it looks good. But otherwise, I think that we have our C-Deck bulkhead in up on the front and it looks fantastic, which is great because that will let us press on with some of these other things and we can get serious about uh, moving on up and that will enable us to address the bridge area and all this other good stuff. So let's get it all painted up, sorted out, pressing on. Okay, so it's been about a day or so and here we are. I uh, got a bunch of coats of paint on, a little bit of filler installed, put in blah blah blah, whatever. There it is. It's done. Uh, I think we're all set. Might do a little bit more touching up here and there, but essentially that's it. So I think that C-Deck bulkhead looks fantastic from Woody's Model Works. Uh, it's flush with the deck. Everything looks straight. The detail is fantastic. And we're good to go. It's nice and straight. And then you think you can see back here all that detail really pops out looks nice so we're ready to go so we've got a bunch of details here in the forward well deck that need to get installed including the ladders that don't exist on the ka detail set uh, but we do have extra ladders in the uh, kit provided by trumpeter which is good we've got our crane mounts up in the front that we got to put in there uh, we've got some staircases and then we can go ahead and start addressing the forward bridge area and building up uh, ADEC and getting things done. So let's go ahead and get these fittings all painted up, sorted out, and dropped and installed here so we can kind of get the forward well deck on par with the aft well deck. Pressing on. 
Okay, so here are our parts all painted up and ready to go. And instead of just boring you with installing them, uh, I thought I'd make a comment or two about painting them. So I did not know this. Uh, the gentleman who does the China 3D prints had made a comment to me. He said, after you clean these all up, you should prime them first with a metalizer primer. I, I didn't know that. And so I went and got some Mr. Metal Primer, and I just... It's clear and all, it's kind of like an etch basically. So there are other primers out there. This is the one I just had access to. So I put a little bit on a brush and you know, I just wipe it on clear and give it a minute to dry. And then I come back with Mr. Base White 1000 uh, because it's white. So that helps with the white stuff. This is a lacquer based paint. So that means that you need lacquer thinner to clean it up. It means you, you need a well-ventilated room. You shouldn't get it on your fingers, uh, but it's great. You thin it with lacquer, spray it on, and, and you're good to go. Uh, it's white, but it's not super white. So like I've been saying all along, I've been using Tamiya XF2 Flat White uh, because it was readily available at the time I started Titanic. I don't love Tamiya paint. Uh, it sprays nicely, but it's not fun to brush on. You get one pass and that's it, and you gotta let it sit. Well, I recently discovered Life Color because I have to switch to acrylics. I love this paint. Uh, this is incredible. This sprays over gray and covers better and produces a better, nicer white than Tamiya, in my opinion. This is This is going to be my... Uh, go to brand moving forward. I'm also going to try and get a hold of some AK colors. I have a feeling I'll be transitioning to life color and AK for my future build since enamel is going away. These seem to be the good replacements. So, anyway, I wanted to share that little tip. Uh, using Mr. Metal Primer first, um, it's making a difference uh, in the way the parts turn out, I think. So, now that I've got all that out of the way, uh, I'll go ahead and uh, install these parts, we'll take a look at everything. So today's segment is from the Titanic magazine that I've shared in other videos from the Heroes and Villains section, and I'll let you decide who's who. Captain Arthur Rostron. Hearing the Titanic's distress signals in the early morning hours of April 15th, the captain of the Carpathia headed toward the sinking ship, which was 58 miles, about four hours away. Soon after reaching the Titanic's last reported position at 4 a.m., Rostron saw a green flare from lifeboat number two. The first survivors came on board at 4.15 a.m. Second officer, Charles Lighttaller, was rescued at 8.30 a.m. Rostron's prompt response saved hundreds of lives. Lady and Sir Cosmo Duff Gordon a successful fashion designer, Lady Duff Gordon, and her husband escaped from the Titanic on lifeboat number one. Although the boat had been built to hold 40 people, only 12 were on board. At one point, Cosmo gave some of the crew members money, claiming it was an act of charity. But some said it was actually a bribe instead. Fearing that the lifeboat would be overrun, Cosmo wanted to avoid helping people who were drowning nearby. Real swell guy. Super swell. <laughs> Super swell. <laughs> okay, here are the deck pieces installed so far, and I think that they look really, really nice, and it's doing what we want them to do. So now the next thing is uh, I'm going to put in some stairs. So right here we have one that drops down in, and almost no one's going to see it, and then there's a matching one over here on the starboard side. Then we have this one that everybody will see and we got to get it right. So every time I do a ship build, I feel like folks struggle with the stairs and so I'm gonna do a little demo on how I do them. Uh, I'm gonna start with these two because if you screw them up, if I screw them up, they're not as visible and it's not that big of a deal. It's good practice for when we get to here. Also notice I don't have the forward crane bases in. That's because they're really big pieces. And even though it seems like, hey, nice and easy, I could drop this in, then all of a sudden you have problems putting these parts in. So that's why when it comes to this stuff, I kind of start in the middle and install everything out. That way I've got places to put my hands and places to rest and, and, and get it right. So now that that's done, um, I don't think it's too big of a deal to put this piece in. I feel like it's not so fragile that I'll have trouble with it uh, in the long run as we're still continuing on with the ship. So 
uh, yeah let's go ahead and make some stairs okay so here we are back with our KA instructions the first thing you have to do uh, is locate the steps necessary to get the parts that you need to do the stairs so KA in all of their infinite wisdom has not provided the information that you need for the stairs that I said I wanted to install. This is the only reference that you have here and you have these sub-assemblies A5, A6, A7, A8. Nowhere else on the K instructions will you see 85, A6, A7, A8 indicating where these go. Good job KA. Also what you'll see down here is part B24 or C16, B24 or C17. Uh, we'll zoom in a little bit here so you can see better what I'm talking about. Uh, B24 is are those little tiny pieces. C17 is this big mat, same with C16. Nowhere will you find the associated stairs number that go together. Good job, K. So B24 is those little pieces. And what they're getting at here is it's an option. As best as we could tell, as best as the internet could tell, you, you choose what you want here. You can either have this step that goes down and attaches to whatever stair that is, or these little cleats to whatever stair that is. Also, please note, for B24 parts, there's no way you're going to see those. I mean, it's almost going to be impossible to see. This mat thing here, this step, you, you might see that. So, uh, now that that's out of the way, uh, we'll, we'll get to this later on. Um, these aren't our parts. That's, that's not what we need. Nope, it's not our parts at all. So, what parts do we need? Well, if you go to the Titanic kit instructions, and you zoom in right here, what page you've got 15 you'll see that we need photo etch parts d18 that is the titanic provided kit pieces and although this is poorly uh, drawn please note this bridge is actually one two c deck b deck a deck is here the bridge is up above on the boat deck uh, so we are in fact looking at right here the a deck and that little opening is that that drop down the deck right there so this is the part we need p18 let me change the battery and we'll get back to you okay battery's changed in the camera so yeah we've determined here we need part photo etch part d18 so uh, if we go to the kit parts and we come up here which one d18 is right here awesome and it's actually guys it's a really good part there's there's nothing wrong with it so what's the advantage to the ka detail well if I zoom in a little bit more here, you'll see that the stairs are just flat. And, you know, maybe if, if, if there was water on it because of sea spray or something, you might slip and fall going up and down them. That would be no bueno. So if you go to sheet D on the Mark One set, you have all their stairs. And you can see here they have uh, put little ribbed level edges on their stairs which is nice so so you have traction when you go up and down them it's not a problem but which one is it uh which one do you do well the best option is to go ahead and take part d18 we'll zoom in here d18 is this one and what is a corresponding set of stairs that matches up perfectly well if i go right here boom this one matches what is this one that is part three sorry about the focus here so three d3 that's the one we're going to use in the um, mark one detail set and we'll cut those out and we'll show you how to install those now uh, that's that's the answer that's that's what I'm going with and we should be all right and that's what you should do I understand that some people say uh, hey, look, the Mark One detail sets aren't perfect, and they're for the people who've done serious research and have all these parts memorized and therefore can just look at them and know where they go. Uh, that is wrong. That's just laziness on Mark One KA details parts instruction sets. That's, you have to get that stuff right. People pay a lot of money uh, for these sets, and you shouldn't have to spend 25 minutes, half hour, digging around trying to figure out where are these parts on your photo etch sheets to correspond to the right part? You should have that in there, Kay. And there, I said it. You know, if you if you got bad instructions, it's no good. If you disagree with me, well, you know what my wife says. E poop. All right, so let's get these pulled out and uh, <clears throat> yeah, let's get them bent installed. 
Okay, so I lost the audio for this segment, so I'm going to have to do a voice over here. But what we do is start out, get your piece all cut out, uh, do a nice job, and uh, get it all set up and ready to go. So I use a photo etch bender, and you don't need a photo etch bender for this task, but you should use the best tool you have available. I bought this one a long time ago. Uh, I think I got it on eBay. You might be able to buy it on Amazon. They definitely have a website. Uh, gentleman makes these in the USA. They are very expensive. I think I paid $65 for this one, and it was totally worth it. I absolutely would recommend spending and investing the money. As you can see, I've used the heck out of mine. It's held up just fine over the years, and uh, it comes with this cool little blade that you can use to uh, fold your stuff up. Uh, you can also just go ahead and use a razor blade if you don't have that. So what you're wanting to do is get your piece up on here, uh, use the whatever desired side that you want, and you're going to go ahead and slide it in. So I'm going to zoom in here in just a second to show you precisely how I'm installing this thing. There's little tabs on either side of the rails that lead up to the steps, and you want to make sure that those are exposed and not underneath the uh, wedge, the silver part on your left. So you can see the little tabs there are exposed to the right. And what this will allow me to do is fold the whole thing up without damaging anything. That's, that's the whole point of those little tabs. So we'll slide in our little edge and we'll bring the whole thing up to 90 degrees just like so. No problemo. You might have to bump it a couple of times. So there you go and then just take it loose, slide it out, and you're all set. Now you're going to have to repeat this for the other side. That lip, uh, the silver edge brake, we'll call it, uh, is designed specifically to allow space for most photo etch parts so that you can bend your next 90 like you see here and not have your previous bend interfere with it. That's, that's the whole point of purchasing one of these devices. They're designed specifically for this task. So again, slide it in. Lift it up, do the best you can, eyeball 90 degrees. You can see there's plenty of room for that rail not hitting uh, the brake, and you get your 90 in there that you're looking for. Okay, so at this point, we've got our stairs basically in the rough shape. Now comes the part that I feel like some people struggle with. Get your favorite set of uh, tweezers. I, I like these pointing ones. And start at the top of the stairs, grab it from the back, and bend it to about 45 degrees and that's how you get your stair the way you want. I recommend starting from the top because it creates a gap that you could get your next your tweezers in underneath for the next set of stairs. This works out well especially like on battleships where they they tend to have these things poorly spaced. Uh, you only get one or two shots at adjusting this. R really you get one and then a slight adjustment for the step to get the angle right. Uh, otherwise they have a tendency to break off and then you got a problem. You can ask me how I know. And then you get to glue it back into position so it looks good, and that's no fun. You can ask me how I know about that, too. Then you get down to the very last one. You can come in from the front and set it, and you're all set. And that's that's it. You just take a look at, uh, make sure your stairs are at the right angle that you like, and you're good to go. If you need to make any adjustments, you can. These ones on the Titanic are really easy because they're pretty big. Uh, battleships and smaller sets of stairs could be a little bit more finicky. You're able to make little adjustments if you need to to make sure everything's plumb and square. You can easily adjust the handrails with your tweezers, just bump them in the right spot. But uh, yeah, that's it. Now all you gotta do is head off to paint, uh, prime them up. Of course you gotta make two of them in this case, a whole bunch more, but yeah, press it on. Okay, so here we'll do our little test fit. I am and am not happy about this. What I am happy about is it drops right in, no troubles, and does exactly what it's supposed to. You got two points of contact on the top with the rails and two points underneath, and as you can see, looks fantastic. Uh, what I'm not happy about, let's see, we can see this here. That's how much railing sticks out on the top. It should come up a whole lot more. Now, fortunately, a bunch of stuff goes here, and so you're basically you're not going to see it. Uh, so it's okay. Or, you know, maybe, yeah, no, this is, <laughs> it should be higher up. This has everything to do with the thickness of the deck uh, provided by Trumpeter. Again, we've got um, 
battleship thickness armor plated decks here that you know are about two and a half feet thick so but it'll work out okay so the next thing we need to do is just paint both of them up uh, and we'll drop them and get them installed but that's how you make the stairs okay before we get too far along here i wanted to show you that uh this is the staircase installed well it's sitting here and needing to be painted uh, i ran into a problem it was too low so as you can see down here at the bottom i added two little pieces of styrene to raise it up so that it ends up sitting in exactly the right place it's probably a consequence of adding that strip down here in the bottom to get c deck where it needs to be and this is all kind of a consequence of working with you know aftermarket detail parts that might slightly change the way things sit a little bit although honestly i suspect um, ka modeled this incorrectly because the real thing that last step is supposed to begin right where you see it here how i have and then this railing the support inside is supposed to continue on down to the deck uh, they've got it so that your last your first step down here is you know at deck level which is not right but anyway i wanted to show you that before i painted it in case some of you following along are like hey mike i'm using all these parts and my ka uh, stairs didn't end up in the right position it's kind of like what's going on with the other stairs that I showed you earlier, but this one's more critical uh, because it's in view that it ends up being correct. So anyway, I just want to show you that before paint. Okay, here we are. Uh, let's see, this forward stair is painted up and installed. Hopefully I've got enough glue on it that it stays in place and ultimately survives the shipping that it's got to go through. Uh, but... There it is. Uh, I think it looks nice. We've got light gray on the treads and then um, the hall gray for the runners. And then, uh, you know, the rails are white and everything like that. So, you know, it looks good. Uh, the other one's installed right here. Let's see. I'll adjust the camera angle. There you go. You can see that, you know, it looks sharp in there and there's some nice detail. So, anyway, that's that's going to be it i think for today's episode this is the introduction to the client's build all complete and as you can see we're moving along with some of the uh, regular uh, parts that you know the meat and potatoes of the build we're getting some real production done here so anyway i hope you've all enjoyed this if you want to see more on this build please go ahead and comment below and what we'll do is we'll press on with this build uh, until we get some of our parts in from the UK that allow us to continue on with our build and we'll, we'll kind of mix them two of them together there. So anyway, that's it for right now. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you next time. Thank you.